Hello everyone and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. For this video, I did a lot of research, I ran a heap of tests, I dug through years old blog posts and reached out to Hunt Showdown devs to verify information, and the result is probably the most comprehensive weapon guide you'll find to date. So sit back and let me learn you a thing or two about the Coldwell Rival 78 shotgun, including its new ammo types and its hand cannon variant. If you love shotguns, then this video is for you. If you hate shotguns, then this video will probably explain them a little bit better. Unlocking at the early rank of 18 and costing a very affordable $100, the Rival 78 is essentially a delivery system for two shots in rapid succession. It is the fire rate that distinguishes it from other shotguns, as it can fire a second shot in well under a second. The only shotgun that can exceed this is the Crown and King, and that is six times the price. And it's also much more restrictive with the custom ammo that you can take. Now the issue with the Cold War Rival is that after your two shots, you have to reload, and this does take four seconds. So you'll start with eight reserve rounds, which should normally be plenty as long as you remember to refill between fights, and the melee capabilities are in alignment with any standard full length rifle, with a heavy attack dealing 54 damage. So four hits to kill an immolator, which is honestly the only thing you're going to be using that feature for regularly. In order to discuss the weapon further, we have to start talking about ammo types. The basic ammo is buckshot, and this comes stock on the weapon and it can be reloaded using normal ammo crates and shotgun cartridges. Well, buckshot is somewhat problematic to get good data on, but I'll start with what we know. Buckshot shoots 14 pallets simultaneously. These scatter outwards in a semi-random pattern as indicated by your crosshair size. It should be noted that jumping, moving, crouching, aiming down sights, any of these, does not affect the spread pattern of your buckshot. In fact, when using buckshot, there is nothing, short of taking a different weapon, that can change your spread pattern. We also know the damage multipliers for each hit location. A chest hit is a 1.3 multiplier, a lower torso is extremely similar at 1.2, an arm is 0.8, and legs are a measly 0.5. Headshots, on the other hand, only bump up damage slightly to 1.5 times base damage. Now, these multipliers are applied individually to each pallet, so in a given shot, it is likely that you're going to hit multiple hitboxes, but you want to have as many pallets hit the higher modifier areas as possible to maximize damage output. And by maximizing your damage output, you can increase the range at which you would kill a hunter. Headshots offer some bonus, but if you aim too high, many pallets will scatter above the target and miss completely. Legs offer an extremely low modifier to the degree that even a point blank shotgun shot will not kill in one hit if you get too many pallets on the legs. So for this reason, I will always shoot center mass with buckshot. The upper chest and lower torso both offer great modifiers and you will always clip some pallets into the arms, but by aiming center mass, you can guarantee an effective one hit kill range with your shotgun. Then you have to consider range. Range doubly hurts shotguns. Not only does each pallet suffer a hefty damage drop off that starts at about 5 meters and completely reduces it to zero at 30 meters, the pallet spread means that faraway targets will get hit by less and less pallets. The store statistics are also not that helpful. They show a damage of 175 to the upper chest at 10 meters and a one hit kill range of 10 meters as well. And although these are more or less accurate, they're based on an aggregation of where they think the pallets might hit in an average shot. So there is definitely a degree of variance due to the random spread of your pallets. Based on my knowledge of damage curves and thousands of hours of playing the game and getting killed by this weapon, I can construct a little guide of how this weapon actually works at different ranges. So provided you are aiming center mass and not whiffing most of your pallets into the air or legs, which is what happens when I see those posts on Reddit where people complain about enemies not dying to shotguns at point-blank range. They missed. Uh, this is what you can expect. Up to 8 meters, a well-aimed shot will guarantee a kill. You could get extremely unlucky, but every single time I see someone complaining that their Caldwell didn't kill a point-blank target, they either missed most of their pallets or aimed too low and suffered the leg damage modifier. Up to 8 meters, it's a pretty sure bet that you're going to one-tap a target as long as you actually aim for their chest. Now even up to 11 meters, you have a reasonably reliable one tap, most of the time, but you need to be prepared to use that second shot, because at this range there is definitely a degree of luck involved. It's beyond this point that everything kind of falls apart. 
Shotgun range drop-off is so steep that your damage will approximately halve every 5 meters out you go, starting at 5 meters, and that's not even taking into account that less pallets will be hitting your target. So this is a really close range weapon. Now I've seen a 15 meter kill with this weapon on me on a death screen, and given the numbers, this should be pretty impossible. But it does take the server a moment to register the position of your attacker upon death, so if they have taken a step back or your body falls away from them, then that will artificially increase the range displayed on your death screen. Okay, so I'm probably getting a little bit too technical to be of help, so let's compare some of the spread patterns. The Cold War Rival 78 belongs to the medium barrel length family of shotguns, alongside the Crown and King, the Winfield Terminus, and the Spectre Bayonet. So all of these weapons have analogous spread patterns. I shot into this wall in the same spot 10 times, and then I overlaid each of the bullet impact points to make a visual aid showing where the pallets fall for the Rival 78. I then repeated with a bunch of other shotguns. Here is my comparison with the Spectre, which is a full barrel length shotgun. As we can see, the Spectre has a much tighter spread than the Caldwell. This is probably a good time to talk about the Caldwell rival's little brother, the Caldwell 78 hand cannon. Now this is a short barrel shotgun, and we can see that the spread pattern increases a fair bit, which will limit its range. As a rule of thumb, when you're using the hand cannon, take everything I say about the Caldwell rival and pretend that your target is 5 meters further away. Because that's basically how much closer you need to be to compensate for this increased spread. So that's more or less it for Buckshot. It's classic, it is very reliable at one hit killing hunters within a specific range bracket, but it becomes a roulette wheel at the outer limits of its effective range, and after that you are just shooting confetti. This is for pushing or holding building interiors, or ambushing enemies that run too close to the bush that you're hiding in. Sneak up, unload, then reload and repeat. It should be noted that Buckshot can penetrate wood, but it loses approximately half its damage. Up close you can absolutely still one-tap a hunter on the other side of that fence or wall, but they essentially have to be 5 meters closer than normal to compensate for that penetration damage reduction. Now, let's talk about flechette rounds. Flechettes are a special ammo unlock that costs $45. They will restrict you to picking up special ammo boxes in order to restore your reserves. This ammo type is essentially a variant of buckshot with a few key differences. Firstly, it cannot penetrate anything, direct hits only. Secondly, the base damage of flechette rounds is reduced compared to buckshot, and the number of projectiles in each shot is reduced from 14 to 7. This introduces another pretty big drawback. Flechette rounds can never kill a full health hunter in one hit, not even if all of the pallets strike the head, which would be extremely rare anyways. So these downgrades are compensated for with three powerful changes. The spread on flechette rounds becomes tighter, as seen by this comparison at the same range. This means that you can actually aim your shot and be much more picky about target locations, rather than just aiming center mass. You can kind of aim for the head with this at up to 20 meters. Now this difference in spread might not look huge, but remember that any of this is amplified with range. So the further away you get, the more you're going to be rewarded for having a shotgun with tighter spread like this ammo type allows. The projectiles also have a much gentler range drop off curve, meaning they keep their damage as they travel further distances. Not only does this mean that you can damage targets very far away, now I can't measure the distance exactly, but you can see here how far away I still get hit markers where there would be nothing from Buckshot, but it also means that you can deal chunks of damage at ranges where Buckshot would only tickle. We're talking that 20 to 30 meter bracket where Buckshot's useless, but you can still pretty reliably two-tap down enemies with flechette rounds. Finally, flechette rounds apply bleeding. Your best assumption is that this is always light bleeding because the bloodless trait is rather popular, but in some scenarios, if enough pallets hit or you hit a target multiple times, then you can escalate that bleeding intensity to tier 3. Now this is of course very nice, but don't rely on it. Regardless, light bleeding is still rather threatening in short to medium range engagements. So essentially, you lose the ability to penetrate and gain the ability to inflict bleed. You lose the ability to one tap, but you gain the ability to two tap a hunter up to 20 meters pretty reliably, 
which is very strong considering the two barrels sported by the Cold War rival. I would say the best way to use Flechette would be to put it on the hand cannon. It still massively helps the spread, and it also gives you the option to apply a nasty bleed pressure while still sporting a rifle, preferably one that can penetrate cover. So, to be clear, Flechette rounds are not an upgrade, but nor are they a downgrade. I honestly think they're the best designed custom ammo for this reason alone. They change the weapon's functionality in interesting ways, they give it a different combat role, but they keep it equally viable. I do like flochettes, but you have to play differently and blast two shots into people at medium range for best results. Okay, so I've been talking a lot and we are nearing the end, but I must reveal an unfortunate truth. Everything I've just told you is more or less useless. Buckshot, flechettes, as interesting as they are, I probably won't run them very often on the Coldwell Rival 78. And that is because for a very pricey $150, you can turn your trusty shotgun into a legitimately scary endgame weapon that outperforms every other shotgun at close range and outperforms most rifles in the mid-range. Slugs are king. Slugs are, I think in the right hands, ludicrously powerful, I'll explain what they do, and then I'll explain why, even though they're so strong, they do have checks and balances to stop them from being OP, as some people might say. So slugs behave completely differently to both buckshot and flechettes. They will fire a single projectile with each shot, and this projectile is accurate, traveling directly to the point you are aiming when using sights. When you hit fire, slugs are unreliable, they could go anywhere, so the takeaway message is always aim down sights when firing slugs. So you get to place this shot wherever you want. If you place it in the upper chest, it will kill a target that is 15 meters away. Not only are you extending the range of the rival by 50%, you are also taking away the randomness. You get to choose where that shot goes, provided you are accurate. Even if you hit the lower torso, you will still kill a target at close range. My estimate is between 5 and 10 meters, but it's hard to get an exact figure on that one. With slugs, you need to avoid hitting arms or legs, because then you will not instantly kill the enemy. Fortunately, if you are using the Cold War Rival, then you can follow up with a guaranteed shot to kill in less than a second anyway, so in my opinion, this does make the Rival the best shotgun to run with slugs in those furious CQC fights. The Crown and King can't get slugs, and the Spectre is too slow in terms of fire rate to compete, although the Spectre is still good at mid-range slug fights because it's very consistent with them, it does have a role, it's just different. Slugs will also kill with a headshot up to 25 meters, which is massive for a shotgun. But I'm not going to harp on about this point because if you're taking slugs to aim for the head, then just take an Agant Officer because it's way better in that role. That being said, Headshots with slugs are incredibly satisfying. So slugs buff both the range and the reliability of the Cordwell in close range, but what I really like is what it means for mid-range engagements. The reduced damage drop-off of slugs means that at 30 meters or so, you are still dealing significant chunks of damage. If you hit the upper chest at this range, you can still quite comfortably kill in two shots. So let's think this through. Two shots from a weapon that can fire again in less than a second. There is no time to get to cover, there is only death. This is the same reason that quick swapping was the go-to meta of competitive players for so long. Rapid, reliable damage output in the mid-range with very, very little time between shots. So now slugs have increased penetration capability as well, so they retain more damage when piercing wooden cover. This allows you to net really nice one-hit kills at 10 plus meters through walls, which would also be impossible with most normal shotguns. All in all, slugs on the Caldwell are very, very strong, and I would take them whenever possible. On a hand cannon, they are just as nasty up close, but they can only guarantee a chest kill at 10 meters and a headshot kill at 15 meters. But because you have that second shot, it makes you extremely lethal, and the lack of spread completely negates the biggest issue of the hand cannon, which is its random unreliability. When using a rifle, a Caldwell hand cannon with slugs is an amazing weapon to quick swap to after a hit, as long as the enemy is within 30 meters. It chunks on damage, fires a second shot much faster than an uppercut would, and it has better penetration than compact pistols. So, are slugs broken? Well, there are certainly some downsides, 
Slugs need special ammo, and if you're using them at mid-range, you will go through that ammo faster than the kill or your dead buckshot skirmishes that you may be accustomed to. Also, at the end of the day, it's still a shotgun. And if you know someone has slugs, just stay away. The same strat that works wonders against the Nitro or the Aftermath works here as well. By the way, the fact I'm mentioning the rival wood slugs alongside those weapons should attest to how great slugs are. So a good player with a Mosin or even a Winfield whose paying attention will be more than able to exploit the range limitations of slugs and easily control a fight against the player using them. Like all close range gear, the rival is best suited to indoor play or surprise attacks regardless of what ammo type you use. Slugs are also very expensive, so many players won't take them on that point alone, but if you have cash to splash, I would say it is very, very worth it. So there we go, Coldwell Rivals 78 analysis complete. This video became too long, but I'm sure you have some nitty gritty questions that you would like answered, and I'll do so in the comments below. Thank you so much to our Patreon supporters, and of course for all you viewers for likewise supporting the channel. This is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming.